Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday evening devotions. We're glad you're with us this evening and uh, uh, it's a it's been a beautiful day here at Sanctuary uh, in Minster, Ohio on beautiful Fort Laramie Lake and we're just so glad that you're here with us this evening to uh, enjoy the evening and to hopefully uh, bring yourself a little closer to Jesus through the uh, uh, scriptures and the songs and the devotions that we're going to share this evening. So welcome. We're going to move into our first hymn, which is Take My Life and Let It Be, which is what we really want God to do for us, and then we'll be back for our prayer. Well, it's that time of our worship when we take our joys and concerns uh, to the Lord in prayer. So uh, this evening we do have a few prayer requests that have come in this week. Um, we have uh, prayers requested for uh, Becky in Alaska who is uh, having some continuing medical issues and we've prayed for her before. She's asked for uh, prayers again. Also for a couple of our younger uh, folks out there, uh, Trevor uh, here in Ohio who has lost a, uh, a friend of his recently to, uh, to a, uh, a medical related death and also uh, to uh, Stella, another one of our young uh, friends here in Ohio who has also uh, lost a friend uh, recently. So we pray that God's 
comfort will fall upon them, that they'll find comfort under the wings of, of God, and, uh, and uh, that they'll uh, know that their friend is uh, in God's hands with Jesus today, and that that will bring them some comfort. We have, uh, <clears throat> there are the usual summer activities going on around the country, uh, athletic camps and and uh, family vacations and family reunions and just all kinds of get-togethers that happen during these warm summer months. And uh, we just pray for, we're going to pray for the safety of all those folks uh, who are traveling, some across country, uh, some by air, some by car, some by train, some uh, by other means of transportation. But um, anyway, we just want to have everybody to have a great time, but also to ask God to watch over everyone so that all those travels are safe ones and that everybody gets where they're going and home again uh, safely. So we're going to pray for that. Also, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of problems going on in our country regarding uh, natural disasters, uh, particularly fires out west, um, from Alaska all the way down through California and points in between. Um, earthquakes and, and, and other things happening in the South Pacific. Uh, and. Uh, of course, uh, wars, uh, different places in our world right now, and uh, uh, refugees that are being displaced in many countries. There's just a lot of things going on in our world that need prayer. And remember, as we be, uh, begin our prayer this evening, um, we need to use prayer every day. Uh, the scriptures tell us pray without ceasing. Uh, that means morning to night. Uh, and we we really need to take that to heart. Uh, prayer should be a first line of defense, not a last line of defense. So, with that said, let's turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for your guarantee through your Son, Jesus, and his sacrifice for us on the cross that you are with us, that you are watching over us and that no matter how rough the road ahead becomes that we will uh, find comfort under your wings that you will walk those difficult roads with us and just be with us uh, through our lives that brings us great comfort Lord and and we thank you for that reassurance and Lord, we, you've heard us uh, have our concerns this morning. We pray for those who are facing challenges in their lives, trials of one kind or another, and help them to never leave, lose sight of your presence that is always within the reach of their right hand, as, as your scriptures tell us. We know that you love us. We know that you're going to stand by us. We know that you gave your only son for us. And for that we are grateful, Lord. We pray for those who are uh, housed in prisons, uh, in jails, uh, around the world. We pray for those who are in hospitals and nursing homes and extended care facilities and other places. We pray for those who are struggling with addiction. And along with that, we pray for those programs in our country that are uh, seeking to provide help for those who are fighting addictions. Lord, we uh, pray for those who are uh, unemployed and seeking work. We pray for those who are unemployed and not able to work because of some physical restriction or handicapping condition, and we just pray for them as well. We pray for the leaders of our country and our world as our world and, and faces so many challenges. We pray for unity within our country, that we will all begin to work for the good of all instead of the good of a few. And Lord, we pray for the, the poor, the homeless, 
the hungry, those who thirst in body and in spirit. We pray for those who don't have good medical care, both in this country because they can't afford it or in other countries because it just doesn't exist where they live. We pray for those who need desperately clean water and good food to eat or a warm place that is dry to lay their heads at night. And Lord, we thank you for this beautiful world that you have given us to make our home, our earthly home, until we join you in paradise later. We thank you for the blessings of good food to eat and clean water to drink. We thank you for those who provide good medical care, for those who uh, are standing ready to protect us, uh, for those firefighters and emergency medical personnel, for our National Guard and our active military. We pray for those who are uh, in our law enforcement communities. We pray for those who uh, are seeking to uh, protect us in other ways. We uh, also thank you, Lord, for uh, your son, Jesus, the greatest gift of all, who brought us uh, the hope of eternal life with you through his sacrifice for us. And as we conclude our prayer, we pray together the words that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will move on into our scripture reading and then on to our message. Our scripture for this evening is found in uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Uh, And we're going to be reading the first chapter, uh, verses 13 to 23. So Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 23. And we're going to be reading from the Living Bible this evening. That is why... Ever since I heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and of the love you have for Christians everywhere, I have never stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God the glorious Father and our Lord Jesus Christ to give you wisdom to see clearly and really understand who Christ is and all that he has done for you. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future he has called you to share. I want you to realize that God has made rich has been made rich because we who are Christ have been given to him. I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those who believe in him. It is that same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heaven. Far, far above any other king or ruler or dictator or leader. Yes, his honor is far more glorious than that of anyone else either in this world or in the world to come. And God has put all things under his feet and made him the supreme head of the church, which is his body, filled with himself, the author and giver of everything, everywhere. 
these are the very words of God for the people of God. And your response is, thanks be to God. This evening we're going to take a, a look at our relationship with Christ. Uh, and that wonderful word called grace. The forgiveness, uh, the reassurance that Jesus is going to love us even though we're sinners. Even though we're not, uh, we don't always do the right things. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to start by talking a little bit about relationships. Things that involve love in our lives also involve work. When people first fall in love, it's fun, it's exciting, it feels good, life is good, the sun seems to be shining all the time even when it's raining. But once that initial euphoria passes and people are settling into uh, the relationship, living together day to day, maybe with some kids thrown in, and in order to maintain a loving relationship, it takes work and discipline. The love is still there, and it's still strong, but that initial euphoria and excitement may not be. We have to be attentive to the needs of the other person in our life. I always tell uh, when I do premarital counseling for people that are uh, planning to be married, I always tell them that if anyone ever told you that marriage is a 50-50 proposition, they're lying to you because marriage, a good marriage, is re requires a hundred percent effort on the part of both people in the relationship otherwise it's not going to be a strong relationship we have to commit a hundred percent to each other uh, when dj and i were both working uh, we set Friday night aside this before our retirement we set Friday night aside as our date night we tried to keep that evening open. Now every day is our date day, but uh, pretty much. But uh, we tried to keep that night, that evening open so that we could go to a movie, go out to dinner, maybe go to a concert, uh, uh, going somewhere special like to a park uh, or uh, to some major event. There can be... Uh, other people involved in that as long as we're doing it together and that's our focus on on just us being together that isn't always easy <clears throat> some weeks one of us had a particularly difficult week and by Friday by the time five o'clock rolled around we were tired and frazzled and we wanted nothing more than just go home and flop down on the couch and take a nap or veg out in front of the TV but if you really love each other you you tough it out <clears throat> you go home you take that shower uh, and you have your date night and likewise, if one of us comes home with a horrendous headache or the stress of the day has been intolerable, then the other person will say, you know, maybe I could fix us something nice for dinner or we could order out and just relax at home tonight. we we'll watch a movie or do something quiet. It's about putting the needs of the one you love first. Um, also, you don't want to have a relationship without getting to know that person as intimately as possible. What do they like? What do they really not like? What things, sometimes it's, it's uh, we have a tendency uh, to be self-centered. We, it, it's about, what it becomes about what we want, what we like, what we want to do. And, and a, a good relationship involves give and take. Um, you know, I know I like to, to uh, go and play golf. I, I know uh, my spouse doesn't particularly care to do that or maybe just doesn't know how and doesn't want to learn. Uh, then we find something we can both do that we enjoy. And I'll still have my golfing once in a while and she'll have her, uh, her things that she does. But, uh, but 
it's thinking about the other person, keeping them in the center of our lives, along with Jesus. That's the other thing I always tell uh, people in premarital counseling, is that that Jesus has to come first in your life, and then your partner, because that keeps the focus where it needs to be, and uh, you're going to do the right things and uh, not be so tempted with things like infidelity or or um, self-centeredness or whatever if you keep Jesus in the middle of that relationship. What is that person uh, really like me doing for them? What are their religious beliefs? Uh, the success of a relationship will uh, depend many times on what each member of that, each person in that relationship does, uh, how much each member of that relationship helps the other do the things and live the kind of life that they want to live. We facilitate, we, we try and enable each other to live our best life and support each other as we do that. Also, you don't want to have a relationship without getting to know that person as intimately as possible. What I've read books about what a good relationship should be and watched videos about good relationships. We've watched them together. We've watched them separately. They aren't books to entertain, but to inform so that we can have a better relationship with each other. We believe that our relationship is worthy of working it, at it to get the most out of it for ourselves and for each other. Most of all, we listen to each other, not just, not just hear what they're saying, but actually listen to what they're saying and try to be responsive to their needs and wants and expectations in a relationship. That needs to go both ways. Most of all, as our relationship began, we had to spend time together to pay attention and learn about our partner's deepest needs, wants, and desires in life, because that's what we should be doing as we share our relationship. And again, the, the most successful relationships are those where both people try to uh, make sure that the other person is fulfilled in the relationship. Uh, so, and it's no different. Uh, so where are we going with this this evening as far as our, 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 our message of faith? Well, it's no different in our relationship with Christ. When we first accept Christ, especially if we're a little older, and especially if it's a result of an event like a mission trip or a retreat uh, somewhere or some kind of a, 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 a awakening experience, where it happens suddenly, there's this euphoria that comes along with it, this enthusiasm. It's, it's exciting. It feels good. Life is good. Kind of like when we started a relationship with the one we love. Because we are starting a relationship with one we're going to love, and that would be Jesus. Life is good. But then as we begin to settle into that relationship with Christ, and the initial euphoria of that experience or that event or the newness of it begins to wane, we need to work harder to maintain a meaningful relationship. But our relationship with Christ is definitely worth uh, working at it so that we can get the most out of it. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 says, Take time and trouble to keep yourself spiritually fit. Bodily fitness has limited value, but spiritual fitness is of unlimited value, for it holds the promise both for this present life and for the life to come. What we as Christians do to keep our relationship with Christ on the right track is what we refer to as works of piety. That's personal holiness. Uh, piety means holiness. These are prayer. We have several types of prayer. Private prayer, family prayers, like around the dinner table or at uh, bedtime with the children or whatever. And also 
public uh, public worship you know besides prayer public worship getting together with other like Christians and uh, and worshiping together and being together uh, and experiencing Jesus together uh, third uh, another act of piety is the Lord's Supper we should always and as often as possible share this sacrament there's no ceremony uh, as intimate with our Savior as sharing Christ's body and blood uh, in that ceremony. It's one of the two sacraments our church celebrates, that and baptism. What an honor it is. What a joy. This is something that Jesus Christ did with his disciples in the most intimate setting possible. Just Jesus and his twelve we can have that same experience and yet I've heard people not in, in in this group necessarily but in others say oh, if they start having communion in church every Sunday I'm out of here I'm gonna find another place uh, or whether they're having communion today that means the service is gonna last 10 or 15 minutes longer I think I'm gonna stay home today what do you think Christ would say about that or if someone stays home because they know it's communion Sunday um, what would he say about that sorry Jesus I won't give you an extra 15 minutes because my time is more valuable than yours is really what we're saying when we do that that's what we say uh, when we turn our back on the sacrament of the Lord's Supper uh, so we have prayer public worship the Lord's Supper reading and studying we need to find books, videos, uh, etc. that help us clarify our walk with Christ. And then we need to read them. This is another thing that is good to do in a group because you have many minds uh, looking at all sides of an issue uh, that's being studied and sharing together what their perspective is. Uh, I was once uh, I once held a study of the Max Lucado book Fearless and I can't speak for others in the group but I learned and grew a lot through that experience I'm not able uh, to attend a lot of studies but I try and get to the ones I can and when I can't I do my own study there are plenty of places out there and I'm going to try and, and give you a list of those where you can go to get classes, Bible studies, and other things uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, learn and expand your knowledge of, of what being a Christian means. Also, reading scripture, this, uh, this, the very words of God the living word is a wonderful way to become more intimate in our relationship with Jesus one of the things uh, we should be reading constantly how can we follow God's plan for us if we don't know what that is and when we apply scripture to our lives we need to look at the whole Bible rather than just a fragment of it we live in a life of sound bites these days and people take little clips and they they uh, uh, take sometimes out of context to make whatever the point is that they want to make people do the same thing with scripture we need to we need to I'm gonna grab this again here we need to read this cover to cover and then make up our minds about how this speaks to us and how we should live our lives how can we follow God's plan for us if we don't do know what's in that book and how can we apply that to our lives if we don't know what it is Christian conferencing is another thing we can do getting together to talk about our uh, faith walk that uh, can be done now with the technology we can do it here online or we can do it uh, in person by joining a group somewhere another work of piety is fasting or abstinence in other words we take something out of our lives 
fasting, talking about uh, generally about food, some item that we really enjoy, to uh, take that out of our lives, to eliminate one distraction um, <clears throat> that uh, helps us fo give us uh, additional time to focus on our relationship with Christ. Um, it could be television. It could be uh, that we st we sit out, uh, we don't watch TV for an hour a day, and we use that time in prayer and and wor worship and those uh, reading scripture, those things that we've just talked about. Um, <clears throat> peacemaking is another one. Fighting stops progress; it doesn't make progress. If we can't compromise, we're mired in the mud. It happens in churches, it happens in governments, and in, in uh, countries, it happens in uh, around the world. We need to be peacemakers, diplomats, willing to compromise for the good of all. Which brings me to the next act of piety, which is acting for the common good. Those things that we can do to help others with their struggles. When we do things, we should always ask ourselves what Jesus would say about what we're doing. <clears throat> As we practice these things, just like brushing our teeth, they'll become automatically a part of our lives. And we won't feel like our day's complete unless we've participated in one or more of these things. Regular participation in a small group for spiritual uh, nurture and accountability is another act of piety. We can and should study on our own, but studying together allows us to grow faster, and we get input from others. This is like Christian conferencing that we mentioned a little bit ago. <clears throat> you can accomplish more of God's work when you work within a group. These are the things that keep us spiritually fit. They help us see what Christ wants us to, to be doing as, a, as our mission in life. So, five, uh, five duties that we have as a member of the body of Christ. We need to give our tithe uh, in. We need to practice the spiritual disciplines we need to receive we need to give our gifts which are above our tithe we give our time and talents that's the the fourth one uh, of by doing works of mercy we're going to talk about that a little bit next week um, and then we need to bring disciples to Christ we need to make disciples so that we can change the world if we want to love God with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our spirits, we have to work at it, just like we do any relationship. God expects that and has every right to, considering all that he has given to us. Let us pray. Lord, help us to every day work both toward our relationship with our families and also on our relationship with you. Help us to uh, make those pr things priorities in our lives so that we can move closer to you and live a better life each and every day. We thank you for this message, for the scripture that went along with it, and we pray that our hearts are open and will receive it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to move on to our final hymn which is shine Jesus shine that's what we're going to ask Jesus to do today and then we'll be back for our final blessing
shadows into your radiance By the blood I may enter your brightness Search me, try me, consume all my darkness Shine on me Shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine Fill this land with the Father Well, thank you again for joining us this evening. Uh, we're so glad you were here. Uh, we have felt your presence. I hope you felt ours. Our prayer for you is, as it always is, that you have found what you come seeking. And we pray that you will continue to seek a closer relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, as we close our worship, please receive this blessing. May the Lord watch between thee and me while we are absent one from another. Amen. We hope to see you again next week for our Wednesday evening devotions here at Sanctuary Lakeside Church. And uh, we uh, want you always to remember that we love you and God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. We pray that your the rest of your week is a good one, that you have a wonderful and safe weekend, and that your next week gets off to a great start. And until we meet again next Wednesday evening, good night and God bless. <music>